Hi guys, this is Mason11, and today I'm bringing you my predictions for the upcoming 2017 NFL Playoffs. It is that time of the season. We are now in postseason. The regular season, surprisingly, is already over. It went, it went by really fast. Um, some of you may be happy about your results, others not. Some of you may be even surprised, or that's as far as what I, how I feel, personally, for my team, which is the Dallas Cowboys. But anyway, I'm going to cut to the chase and get to uh, what we have from um, the upcoming playoffs. So representing the AFC, we have for the buys the New England Patriots, who finished 14-2 and with the best record in the entire NFL. We also have the Kansas City Chiefs finishing 12-4. and um, And also the fact that they swept the Raiders gives them this tiebreaker and the two seed. And uh, for our other division winners, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. A little bit inconsistent at first, but then finish off the season really strong and have a record of 11 and 5. Um, next, we have the Houston Texans, who were who went 9 and 7, which was tied with the Tennessee Titans, but they won the tiebreaker due to their divisional record. Uh, and as for our wild cards, we have the Oakland Raiders, who finished 12 and 4, and we have the Miami Dolphins, who finished 10 and 6. And for the NFC playoffs, we have my team, the Dallas Cowboys, at 13 and 3. Uh, we have the Atlanta Falcons, who finished 11 and 5. And then for our other division winners, we have the Seattle Seahawks, who finished 10, 5 and 1. Uh, we have the Green Bay Packers, coming off a six-game win streak. They're 10 and 6. And for our wild cards, we have the New York Giants, who finished 11 and 5, and the Detroit Lions, who finished 9 and 7. All right, so now we, here we are with uh, the brackets, and the first game that we'll be for this playoffs is um, the Raiders and Texans game. So um, both of their uh, both of the quarterback situations for these teams are really uh, not looking good, in my opinion. Um, we I don't know what's I don't know what happened really to Tom Savage at this point, and I don't know if he'll be healthy in a week. Uh, if he's not, then they're going to have to stick to Brock Osweiler, which is going to be an issue. But as for the Raiders, uh, we all know that Derek Carr got hurt um, in Week 16, but Matt McGloin now is not perfectly healthy, so they may have to stick to they have to, they may have to go with their rookie Connor Cook. So um, I'm not expecting this game to be high scoring at all. It's just because both offenses look really suspect right now. So. Um, as, a, as far as to their defenses, uh, the Raiders' defense, especially, especially them, their passing defense in their secondary, was pretty inconsistent at the start of the season. But uh, as the season went on and progressed, then grew a lot better. As for the Texans' defense, it was very strong. The last time I checked, it was first in total yards allowed. But um, in my it's in my opinion, it's not the number one defense in the league. You just can't you can't judge that just from stats. But um, it's still beast. That's all I got to say. So, um, it was a little bit tough for me to choose this game because the Raiders were a way more consistent team than the Texans this whole season, but now that they've lost their, they lost a quarterback, Derek Carr, who had an MVP caliber season, in my opinion. Um, I think they're coming to a screeching halt, and I think the Texans defense is going to shine against the Raiders offense, and they're going to win. All right, so our next game is going to be this NFC wildcard game. It's the uh, Lions and the Seahawks. So the Lions, they surprised me this season. I didn't really have high expectations for them, but um, they happened to win a lot of the games, especially coming back late in the fourth quarter. So you, while it does that, that does prove that Matthew Stafford is definitely a clutch quarterback. That actually gives me um, quite a few concerns because it does doesn't mean I mean, it, it shows that um, the Lions didn't really uh, like win a game like throughout the whole in, in entirety, except for that Saints game. Um, they uh, so basically they if I don't know, it was like about eight eight games I believe they came back from losing, and I believe uh, the only one that didn't that they lost from was that Titans game in the beginning of the season. Although I don't remember if they were losing entering the fourth quarter, but I think they may have. Been, but uh, either way, the Titans uh, came back like with one minute left and scored a go-ahead touchdown. But um, that was like the only game that didn't go their way. But um, 
the other eight games did. So theore theoretically, they could have finished like six and ten, if which would which is just three of those eight games that didn't go their way, and they could have finished close to what I predicted their record would be, which was five and eleven. So I got. As as good as Matthew Stafford was this season, and as a matter of fact, he was incredible. I took him too lightly over this offseason. He did way better than I thought. But as good as the offense was, I'm not really happy with the matchup that they're going to have. That Seahawks defense, yes, um, or actually for the offense, was pretty inconsistent from time to time. But that defense, I really don't expect it to choke, especially in Seattle against... Um, who I believe is kind of like a pretender for uh, these playoffs. So, um, in case you haven't figured it out yet, my prediction for this game is Seahawks to advance. Uh, next up, we have the Dolphins going to the Steelers. And uh, the last time these two these two teams played, uh, the Dolphins kicked the Steelers' butts. However, that was because the Steelers were missing Ben Roethlisberger and the. Dolphins had Ryan Tannehill. The Steelers right now are really healthy, and the Dolphins are missing Ryan Tannehill. They have to go with their backup quarterback, Matt Moore, for this game. So, I think that's going to be an issue for um, their offense. Um, while the Steelers' offense, it looks set to be on... to go on, to... Uh, I don't know if they're going to do as well as in week 17, but I see them putting up a lot of points in this game. Um, Miami offense, I think, will actually do uh, pretty decent for at least. I'm not, I think maybe more good than bad, but in the end, I don't think they're going to be able to outscore the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, for this game, I'm going with the Steelers. And finally, for the wild card round, we have the Giants going to the Packers. Um... And as we all know, the Packers are really hot right now. Uh, they've won six in a row. Um, and the Giants, uh, they've they've had a really good defense. You got to admit for this whole season, it was it was overall really bad in 2015. But it took a giant step forward this season. So this that's, that will be a little bit of a challenge for, for the Packers' offense, in my opinion. Uh, and also, the Giants' offense has a pretty nice matchup for um, the Packers in regards to the Packers' defense, who suffered uh, more injuries in that Lions game uh, last night. Um, although, uh, I think the Packers' defense won't be uh, too bad, in my opinion. I mean, it was even with all those injuries uh, yesterday, they still managed to beat the uh, Detroit Lions, who, again, a playoff team, even though I'm even though they've had uh, question marks around them. So um, I think this one's the toughest game to predict for this uh, wild card round. But um, except because uh, both teams actually are very dangerous in regards to playoffs. For, for example, the Giants last time they made the playoffs was the 9-7. Uh, was when they were 9-7 in 2011 when they won the NFC East. They, went, they later won in the Super Bowl, which included a defeat in uh, Green Bay against the 15-1 Packers, and then also in San Francisco against the 13-3 49ers, and then beating the 12-4, uh, I want to say, it was Patriots. And then also we had uh, in 2007, of course, that's when they were the wild card, who I think they were also 9-7, and they ended up beating in Dallas 13-3 Cowboys, and then later the 16-0 Patriots. So you never want to take them near times lightly when in the playoffs. As for the Green Bay Packers, though, we all remember, hopefully, in 2010, when they were the 60 at 10 and 6, they went through the playoffs and they beat everybody. Yes, they were the Super Bowl champions as a 6 seed. So, um, you never want to take Aaron Rodgers lightly, especially ever since he said he was going to run a table. He's run the table. So, uh, in the end, I think this is going to be probably the best game of this uh, wildcard round, but. But if, if for uh, my choice, I will be going with the Green Bay Packers. Now I move on to the divisional round, uh, and our first game, I believe, will be the um, Seahawks going to the Falcons. And uh, last time these two teams played, it was the Seahawks coming in a very close match. Uh, but, um, 
Although that's not the reason why the Falcons lost, though. They did. They had uh, different opportunities and uh, different occasions, but they didn't uh, capitalize on them. But um, who knows? If they did get pass interference, they would have had one more chance. So we never, you never know. But I can't say that the Falcons would have won because there's, you never know what's gonna happen. It game's not over till it's over. And uh, if they were granted pass interference on that play, the game still went on and been over. That Seahawks defense still good, so you never know. They could have made some stop. But um, anyway, um, at that point, um, Matt Ryan, which in October was uh, kind of sl uh, slowed down a little bit in, uh, in comparison to his September self. But uh, in regards to him in December, oh man, he and the Falcons' offense was on fire. So uh, I'm, I know Matt Ryan has overall been a pretty bad playoff quarterback in his career, but he's never had a season like this. This is. Uh, this might, this could be his best season ever in his career. As for the Seahawks, that defense, of course, um, you never want to count out. Uh, so they could. I I do see them making some stops on the Atlanta Falcons offense, and also uh, as for the Seahawks offense, um, if the offensive line is going to be able to hold the pass rush from Atlanta's front seven, then I think uh, Russell Wilson will be able to perform pretty well and uh, drive the Seahawks down the field on their drives. So, um, if you want me to be honest, this was actually a really tough game for me to predict. Because uh, I overall, I like both teams for this matchup. I was kind of going back and forth. Originally, I was picking the Falcons, then I was picking the Seahawks, then the Falcons, then the Seahawks. And I'm just, I was just going around in circles. So, um... If I'm the person, the team that I'm leaning toward right now, I'm going to have to say the Atlanta Falcons. They've just been overall more consistent as of late, and I think they're going to uh, win a close one. Uh, who knows? It could be like that um, Cardinals uh, Packers game last year where the Cardinals were heavy favorite, but then they kind of played a little ugly, but then won it at the end. I could see the Falcons doing that. But um, I think the Falcons are going to win, whether it's a good win or a bad win. Uh, next, we have, for the divisional round, the Texans going to the Patriots. Um, and if you want me to be honest, out of these eight teams that are still in, I think the Texans are the worst. Um, in fact, if the, the Texans were against uh, the Steelers, they would have been crushed, in my opinion. If the Raiders' uh, quarterback situation uh, was fine, then the Raiders would have crushed the Texans. Patriots, in my opinion, have been completely... Uh, unstoppable, and um, I don't see uh, whoever is going to be uh, at quarterback for, for Houston at this point um, outshining Tom Brady. So my pick for this one, Patriots. Uh, next we have the Steelers going to the Chiefs. Um, last time these two teams played, uh, the Steelers absolutely blew out this the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, um. I'm, I don't really like to say home field advantage very much because, um, I mean, it's it's more, um, I always, uh, I mean, I always attribute uh, uh, game results to the game itself and how all the team players played. But, um, well, this game will be in Kansas City, so, I mean, you don't want to count out the Chiefs because, I mean, their defense has been a lot better ever since that terrible game against the Steelers uh, in September. And, I mean, in Kansas City, they've been absolutely unstoppable. In fact, uh, a little keynote to uh, point out, they went 6-0 and in their division. They swept at each team in the AFC West. So, they are a very dangerous team. You never want to count them out. Steelers, on the other hand, in my opinion, are also a very dangerous team. And um, the fact that they've been really, really consistent with so much more momentum, I am going to choose the Pittsburgh Steelers for this matchup. Now, um, before I go to the Packers Cowboys game, I want to point out that um, in 2014, when the Steelers were a three seed, I actually also predicted them to advance to the conference uh, finals. Except the only problem was they lost in the wild card round to the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm not trying to jinx you, you, you guys, Steelers, but um, if you guys lose to the Miami Dolphins, then I might laugh just because, just because it's a little bit, it's pretty ironic of a coincidence. Anyway, also in that playoffs, we had the um, we had we had a Cowboys Packers game, 
And uh, now uh, for this playoffs, we're going to be seeing that again. But this time, uh, this one is in Dallas, unlike the last one, which was in Green Bay and Cold. Um, so the Cowboys, man, they've had a very uh, great season. I, as a Cowboys fan, I never expected Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott just to um, touch the chase right away and turn into a Super Bowl caliber team, in my opinion. Um, except here's the thing, though. This is the this the Cowboys are just a really young team right now, so I feel like they're a little bit naive. Although um, that offensive line does have the experience because they were there together in 2014. But um, as for Dak Prescott, this is he's still a rookie, and I have a gut feeling that he's going to make some mistakes in this game. And as for Aaron Rodgers, we all know he's got a shitload of experience when it comes to the playoffs, and he's always a dangerous quarterback. So, and not to mention, um. I know the I know statistically the Cowboys defense looks good, but um it can be very inconsistent from time to time. Um so again don't don't just judge that by stats. Uh, so um while I do expect the Cowboys offense to have a great uh, game as it did last time these two teams played, um I do expect the Green Bay Packers offense to be way better than in uh, I think it was week six. So um. The Packers at this point have won seven in a row if you include that if you include that Giants wildcard game. And if you want me to be very honest, I'm going with the Green Bay Packers against my Dallas Cowboys. There, I said it. I said it. Green Bay Packers. If, if, I don't know if I'm crazy yet, but I think the I think the Cowboys are a little bit vulnerable at this point, and I feel like the Green Bay Packers are gonna do it. I'm sorry. Call me a fake fan all you want, but just in the end, just know that there's no such thing as a fake fan. I'll be rooting very hard for the Cowboys in this matchup or against whoever, whether it's Packers or whoever they're playing. But and when it comes to predictions, I got to be realistic and unbiased. I'm sorry. All right. So now uh, we're in uh, the conference, the conference finals. And I believe the first one is the NFC matchup, which in this case um, is the Green Bay Packers going to the Atlanta Falcons. This is going to be an offensive shootout if this game happens, and I would love to see this for a conference finals matchup. That's what I love to see a Packers Cowboys or a Falcons Cowboys. Um. Anyway, I know I've said, I know I, I know I repeated earlier that Matt Ryan is not um a very trustworthy quarterback when it comes to the playoffs, but he's never had a season like this. I repeat, he's never had a season like this. In fact, the last time the Falcons were in the playoffs, the Falcons made it all the way to this round in 2012. And uh, I know the Falcons' record was better than back then, but the Falcons' offense is what's been carrying this team. Um, so I feel like the fact that the Packers' defense is really uh, suspect at this point, I think the Falcons' offense is going to have a day. But as for the Packers' offense, I expect them to have a great day, too, because um, while I do believe the Falcons' defense is improving with the um, young players on their team, such as uh, Keanu Neal, um, I, don't ex I, I continue to believe that Aaron Rodgers will um, be a very strong playoff quarterback and will be con continue to contest uh, the NFL into the reason why uh, they should pick him for the MVP. As well as for Matt, as for Matt Ryan too, I think both of them will be trying to prove that they deserve to be an MVP in this game. But um, in the end, mm, Matt Ryan is just a really more trustworthy. Uh, I mean, as uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, uh, let me let me rephrase, is a much more trustworthy quarterback than Matt Ryan. But Matt Ryan has just been a lot more consistent. Ugh. I mean. I'm a little nervous to predict the Falcons to go to the Super Bowl, but um, I think I think this is the I think this is the year for Matt Ryan. I think he's going to do it. Falcons are going to Super Bowl Fifty One. All right, moving on to the AFC conference round. It's the Steelers going to the Patriots, which is also make a really nice offensive shootout. Um, but um, I feel like the Steelers defense is going to uh kind of choke a little bit. I don't expect um, the Patriots to like blow out the Steelers as they did um, to the Colts two years ago, but um, I think Tom Brady is and his offense are gonna crush the Steelers' defense. Again, I don't see the Steelers' offense going away quietly. They should probably put up at least twenty points, but 
I'm expecting the Patriots overall just to, again, have a strong game. So they go to the Super Bowl, and our Super Bowl 51 is the Atlanta Falcons and the New England Patriots. So, um... I think this, if this Super Bowl occurs, I would be, I would love to see this. Um, although I did say the same thing to the um, Broncos Seahawks game Super Bowl, I should say, uh, three years ago, and um, the Broncos Panthers Super Bowl last year. Both of those Super Bowls were absolute shit. Although the last time the Patriots were in the Super Bowl, which was two years ago, that was an that was an awesome Super Bowl. So hopefully, um, the fact that it's the Patriots and not the Broncos for if there's any. I don't believe in any curses, but if that if there's some reasonly there, hopefully that will make this Super Bowl a good Super Bowl. Uh, anyway, um, I think uh, both offenses will bat will be battling each other out in the first half. So don't be surprised if it's tied after the first two quarters. Um, but once we uh, go a uh, kind of toward the middle or late of like the second half, I think. Patriots and Tom Bray are going to start running away from Matt Ryan. Um, Matt Ryan has had an incredible season, and if he goes to the Super Bowl, he deserves to win it. But I just think um, the Falcons' uh, train is just going to come, is going to be derailed at this point. So uh, there you have it. I predict the New England Patriots to win Super Bowl 51 over the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if your team is in the playoffs, good luck to them. Uh, I wish the best of luck to my Dallas Cowboys, who are going to be featured as the number one seed for NFC. So, um, have a good day. And go Dallas Cowboys.